What is up my Tude and Dudettes and welcome back to TellerTube. In today's video we're going to be looking at the subreddit r slash choosing beggars. If you're new to my channel be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with my latest videos. And with that being said sit back relax and enjoy the video. Found lost phone on a busy city street. Unreasonable request for return follow. This just happened about 15 minutes ago in Philadelphia. I work remotely from home as an insurance adjuster. While on my break, I go outside to walk my dog. When I get to the corner, I find a cell phone laying on the ground. I like to think I'm a decent person, so I pick it up in the hopes of returning it. I discover the phone is locked, but decide I'll give it an hour to see if someone calls. And if not, I'll leave it with the doorman at the building I live in and explain the situation to him. About 10 minutes after finishing up my dog's walk and returning to my apartment, the moment I was waiting for occurred. The phone rang. I answered answer excited that I would be able to make someone's day after the panic that sets in for losing one's phone. A Hispanic woman answers and I try to tell her to come pick it up from my address, but she has trouble understanding me. She then hands the phone to another woman who speaks English much better than I speak Spanish. She then asks if I can bring her the phone and provides her address stating it's in the blank projects and that she'll be home all day. It was at this moment I had realized I had a choosing beggar on my hands. I let her know that I have no issue with returning the phone but I was not going to deliver it and inconvenience myself further. She then recommended I mail it to her. I repeated that I refused to make this a hassle or chore for me and that mailing would cost me money as well. After that, I let her know that I'd be leaving it with the doorman and that she is more than welcome to come grab it and hung up. Now I'm kinda pissed I didn't just leave it on the ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, I won't be able to come pick it up. You could mail it though. Is there lactose in it? I have started to enjoy baking. What I am making is nothing out of the ordinary, simple muffins, brownies, or sometimes a few cookies, as I bake what I like. My family, however, does not really enjoy baked goods, and since I don't want to waste ingredients, I take what is left over to my class with me. I give my baked sweets out for free and always follow the same system. My friends get one, then it is first come, first serve. Never had a problem with it until I encountered Choosing Beggar. That day, I had some brownies left over. When they turned around and looked at my brownies, then already took one in their hand, not asking is uncommon, but it was okay, and then asked me if it had lactose in it. I told them that I didn't add milk, so I didn't think so. They mustered the brownie and then looked at me again, asking if the cocoa powder I had used had lactose in it, since that was not uncommon according to them. I honestly wasn't sure about that and told them honestly, even though I was slightly embarrassed. No one in my family has lactose intolerance, so I never checked that exactly. Choosing beggar, scrunched her nose, let the brownie drop back on the plate, and turned around without speaking another word. Later on, I heard them mutter about me being an a-hole because I got their hopes up and then let her down, because they are lactose toast intolerant and didn't want to take the risk. They were mad they couldn't have a brownie for free and then went around calling me an a-hole. Most of their friends even agreed. Some said it was because I left brownies in the hopes when I knew some couldn't have any. Others said it was because I destroyed choosing beggars hopes. This has been a week back and they are still mad at me gossiping behind my back because of a brownie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Karen, it's a free brownie. Just don't eat the thing then. Shake my head. My son deserves the fix for free. So I run a computer fixing business in my high school. People come to me with all their electronic repairs because I only charge parts and 10 to 15 euros. Depends on the job for labor costs. One of my teachers even asked me to fix her laptop once. Anyway, into the part you want to see. I was fixing an iPhone SE at lunch and this kid in the first year asked me how much it would cost for me to fix his gaming PC. I asked him what was wrong with it and he said he got a virus and the chassis was broken. I then asked him which kind of case I would replace it with and he said one that was 30 to 40 pounds. The Aero Cool Bolt Mini to be specific. I told him I would do it for 50 pounds. He says it's too much and he would only pay me 10 pounds. I said I would fix the virus for that amount and he shouted at me because it's just a stupid case. He stormed away and I blew it off and continued working on the phone. The next day I was walking out of school when this lady who looked to be in her early 40s, she said, are you blank? I said, yeah, why? I'm entitled kid's mother. I say, oh, are you asking about the repair? I quoted him for 50 pounds, but if you buy the case from somewhere, I can do it for 15. She then said in the typical choosing beggar whiny tone, well, you should do it for free because you were rude to him. I then told her that I only refused because I would have been losing money. That's when she interrupts. This is ridiculous. 
ridiculous. I shouldn't have to pay for that. You are his friend and should give him the fix for free. I interrupt her and say, listen, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not his friend. He just asked me about the repair and I told him the price. If you or him aren't happy with that, then you can find someone else to do it. She shouted that she was going to tell the school's headmaster that I was rude to a parent and that I'm running a business during school hours. Although my headmaster already knew that I'd done repairs and even let me a screwdriver kit once. He would also believe me about the whole being rude thing cause he knows I don't cause trouble. Nothing much else happened afterwards, the headmaster asked me about it because she complained and then I told him what happened. He fully understood because this lady was known to cause a fuss when she didn't get her way. Example, on parents evening, she didn't book any appointments and shouted at the headmaster when there were no free spots. He told me that everything was fine and gave me a lollipop from the jar on his desk. So everything worked out in the end. I mean, my last year of high school, by the way, before anyone asks. <laughs> Wow. Well, Karen, I'm not gonna work for free, and if you don't wanna pay, then go to someone else. Thanks. A choosing beggar at my door. I am homesick with some nasty cold, and I had ordered some food. Figuring it was DoorDash, I opened the door without looking through the peephole. There was a 15 year old boy at my door with a handful of flyers and a brochure. I felt uncomfortable as I normally don't open the door but I figured I could hear him out. He was from his local high school selling cards for discounts at local shops and restaurants blah blah blah. He told me they were $20 cash. Thought this was suspicious but I felt bad that he was out on a cold February night going door to door selling stuff so I told him, I don't want the card but I'll give you a few bucks as a donation because I feel bad for you doing this. I hand him $5. He looks at it and goes this is it? I was a little shocked and said yes, good night. As I was closing the door, he said this. I deserve more than $5 being out here selling this crap. I should have snatched the money back and said too bad. Not even 20 minutes later, he came back. I had my door open because DoorDash was finally here with my food and as I was signing the receipt, the kid comes walking up with another kid. The other kid looked so sad that was probably for effect. They asked me for more money, I said I had no more to give because sorry, I just paid for my dinner. The kid had the gall to turn to the delivery driver and ask him to give him the money because it's for a better cause and you probably will make this back quickly with another delivery. The guy laughed and said no. I said no and closed the door and went to town on my soup. The first kid, the pushy one, left, but for the next 10 minutes, the sad second kid stood at my door knocking. I wasn't falling for it again, I'm now more cautious who I open my door to. They're teaching kids to hustle young. He's not the first kid coming around to push a sale for his high school program, but he definitely left an impression. <laughs> well kiddo, he definitely didn't have to give you that $5 donation. Choosing beggar nursey. For background, I'm a hospital nurse, so 24-7, 365 days type of job. In my particular position, I'm also cross-trained for multiple specialty departments as well as being able to train new staff and be the head nurse on various units. I get paid more than a D and can make my own schedule with some limits. The catch to all of this is that I spend up to 75 hours a week on call and when I'm called in I get zero say where I'll be or if I'm training someone or acting as a head nurse. Also, people always want nurses with my job to cover their requests off because their other co-workers won't. Because of a problem we had with in the past, if I agree to work for someone else and not where I'm needed, I lose about $13 an hour. Plus it doesn't count towards my hours for call pay and overtime. Nurse Baker is aware of all of these things, but I recently covered a weekend for a good friend because it was her parents 50th wedding anniversary and they were having a huge party for it. Apparently, this sent Nurse Baker's brain into overdrive. Nurse Baker. Hey, I know you worked for your bestie last weekend. If I gave you some dates, could you cover them? I'd really appreciate it. What dates? And what are you offering if I trade? Why would I have to offer you anything? I can't work for you and it's extra money for you. It's not though, I lose money covering for you. No you friggin don't, you get paid by the company. And it's overtime, so time and a half. No, if I work for you, I lose my premium pay and that's $13 an hour plus I can't claim call pay or overtime which is up to double pay plus differentials. So really, if I work overtime to cover your shift, it costs me $250 to $400. Tell me the dates though and maybe I can do one on the same deal everyone else gets. Wait, you make a deal with everyone else? Yeah, I'll cover their shift but I want $50 and they have to buy me dinner that night. Usually a $7 sandwich combo. You want me to pay you to take my shift? That's boogie, I can't believe you won't help me. Oh, um, the dates are Valentine's Day, Mardi Gras, St. Patrick's Day, the weekend before, Easter weekend, and Memorial Day weekend. 
Oh, so all the days my boss will pay me extra to work for her and I can make almost triple pay? But you're single and I have a fiance and we have kids. You should be glad to work those shifts for me so I can stay at home. That's 300 a shift before taxes. No, it's a $350 loss. I can make 650 a shift. Also, you're ridiculous for implying that I'm so pathetic I have nothing to do on holidays except work. But you're single, what are you going to do? Single women don't have lives. Don't you just stay at home with your cat? I want to spend time with my boo and my kids. Yup, that's exactly what single women do. We just go home and lie in our bed with our pets until we have to work to bring some meaning into our lives again. <laughs> donkey. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that like button as it would really help me out. Subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with my latest videos, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.